Good morning on this 15th day of June, halfway through the month already. The uh, scripture for the day to get us started on our thoughts today comes from Psalm 1 and verse 6. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. To read the Bible in a year, we now need to move on to the book of Nehemiah and read chapters 1, 2 and 3 and Acts chapter 2 verses 1 to 21. Some thoughts for the day. If you don't have a dream, how are you going to make a dream come true? Some of you might recognise that line from South Pacific, the movie. Dreams come true. Without that possibility, nature would not incite us to have them. All our dreams can come true if we have the courage to pursue them. The motivational thought for the day, change does not necessarily assure progress, but progress definitely requires change. Knowledge is essential for change, for learning creates both new wants and the ability to satisfy them. On this day, in 1215, King John of England put the royal seal on the Magna Carta, the Grand Charter of English Liberties, at Runnymede, near Windsor. In 1844, Charles Goodyear patented vulcanization. The American inventor is credited with developing the basic concept by, of strengthening rubber by adding sulphur or similar materials. In 1876, tsunamis after an earthquake flood northeast coast of Japan, killing 28,000 people. And in 1896, tsunami strikes the Shinto festival on the beach at Sanriku in Japan and 27,000 are killed, 9,000 injured and 13,000 homes were destroyed. In 1924, on this day, the Ford Motor Company manufactured its 10 millionth automobile. In 1991, on this day, Mount Pinatubo exploded. The stratovolcano's eruption was one of the most violent of the 20th century and about 800 people died. In 2017, a new record was set for the price of a parking lot in Hong Kong, it was $664,000. Oh, that's what you call parking at a premium. The personal story of the day is entitled, God has always rejected evil. The scripture comes from Genesis 18, verse 25. And there are further references from Zechariah chapter 1 and verses 18 to 21. Shall not the judge of all the earth do right? Many Christians testify to the grace and goodness of God. Yet how often do they explain how much God hates sin and how severely he intends to deal with it? Sin causes separation from God and reverses all the ongoing blessings that God created for his people. News of divine judgment has an essential place in evangelism. People have to bear and hear the bad news about sin and death before they can receive the good news about forgiveness and new life in Christ through the Holy Ghost. The scriptures reveal that judgment was passed on Israel's enemies in today's article. And just the just wrath of God was the focus of Zechariah's second night vision. This followed up on the first vision in which God assessed the situation and promised judgment. Today's vision has two parts. In the first, Zechariah saw four horns. Generally, horns symbolize strength in the Bible. These horns were probably man-made objects, something like trumpets, and possibly crafted from animal horns. They represent the nations which had conquered Israel and Judah, especially 
Assyria, Egypt, Babylonia and Persia. An alternative interpretation suggests that four is a symbolic number signifying completeness and in this view the horns stand for all the enemies of God's people. In the second part of the vision the prophet saw four craftsmen who unmade or destroyed the four horns. They represent nations, namely Egypt, Babylonia, Persia and Greece, who had overthrown or would overthrow the first set of nations. In the fate of these nations, we find a dramatic contrast. Whereas they had felt stable and secure in the first vision, now they're terrified and defeated. Whereas they had lifted up their horns, that is, made war against God's people in the past, now their horns will be cast down. How did this dra drastic change come about? By the Lord's decree, who had justly judged their sin and now sent punishment. Divine judgment was one dimension of the comfort promised to Israel. Sin would not triumph forever. God would step in and balance the scales of justice. Seen from this perspective, the wrath of God is a purifying force and his judgment is an event we can look forward to in hope and faith. How are your witnessing skills these days? In your testimony, be sure not to skip over or downplay the part about sins and sin's punishment, which is eternal death. This has never been a popular point and is even less accepted these days against a background of cultural values that barely know what sin is, much less see it as a problem. But don't be embarrassed, hesitant or afraid of rejection. Just share the truth. The truth is that sin earns God's wrath and apart from Christ's salvation, it merits judgment and hell. The devotional thoughts of the day. The first is entitled, I don't believe in potatoes. It's been said that in the former Soviet Union, the peasant farmers often enjoyed telling a humorous story to lighten their dreary lives. It seems that one day a government official came to a farmer and inquired about the year's potato crop. Oh, it was wonderful, the farmer replied slyly. It was so big it reached to the very foot of God. The commissar's countenance quickly changed with a scowl, he said. But comrade, this is a communist state and we are atheists. You must not forget there is no God. Ah, that's my point, the farmer replied. No God, no potatoes. <laughs> yes, whether we believe it or not, God is the source of all things. See Psalm 136 verse 25. The Apostle Paul told the pagan audience, and it's recorded in Acts chapter 17 and verse 28, for in him we live and move and have our being. And in Colossians 1 verses 16, 17 and 18, he focused on the great creating and sustaining work of God in the person of his son, Jesus Christ. Without him, we couldn't draw a single breath and our bodies could not function. Do we live in the faith we have? Do we share our faith in a personal God to whom we owe our very existence? Do we not respond with prayer, thanksgiving, fellowship and ministry? If not, we, very, we differ very little from that commissar who saw no connection between God and potatoes. The second thought is entitled Comfort from Above. And the scripture comes from Isaiah chapter 40 verses 1 and 2. Comfort ye, comfort ye my people, saith your God. Speak ye comfortably to Jerusalem and cry unto her that her warf warfare is accomplished, that her iniquity is pardoned, for she hath received of the Lord's hand double for all her sins. Despite all our backsliding and sin, despite every failure and disappointment, God is still God and he is a God of grace and mercy. He is a father who has compassion on his troublesome and unruly children. Hardships, in principle, are the result of sin, backsliding and rebellion. 
God does not torment us. He is the source of life. But when we leave him, we end up in a spiritual desert. Life dries up, joy disappears, and an answer seems far away. On our own, we are incapable of pulling ourselves up. We are in desperate need of God's help. Were it not for the Lord's grace and mercy, we would be hopelessly lost. But God speaks soothing, soothing words of love and forgiveness to his people, wearied by sin and rebellion. We are reconciled to God despite our transgressions. God truly remedied the problem of sin when Jesus died on the cross. Accusations against us are nailed to the cross. Our sins are not merely forgiven and forgotten. God gives us a double portion for all our sins. God does not merely repair. He blesses abundantly. He does so much more than we could ever ask or imagine. The Lord loves his people. The Lord watches over his people. The Lord cares tremendously for each and every one of us. When we turn to him, he has the wonderful capacity of paying for our sin with a double portion of grace. And his restoration is beyond what we deserve or possibly could imagine. You have very good reason to rejoice. The facts of the day. Every time you lick a stamp, you gain one-tenth of a calorie. That's fortunate that they now have uh, self-adhesive stamp, uh, stamps, isn't it? The man who played the voice of Bugs Bunny was allergic to carrots. <laughs> a couple of uh, lighter moments for the day. A man took his Rottweiler to the vet and said to him, My dog's cross-eyed. Is there anything you can do for it? Well, said the vet, let's have a look at him. So he picked the dog up and looked into his eyes and checked around his skull and he said, well, I'm going to have to put him down, unfortunately. Just because he's cross-eyed, said the man. No, he's very heavy, said the vet. <laughs> On a visit to my doctor, I was very pleasantly surprised to find that he'd installed tape music in the waiting room. So I sat there enjoying a piano recording. But I heard an elderly lady say to her companion, just like these young doctors, there's a crowded waiting room and he's in there playing his piano. <laughs> okay, uh, the thoughts in verse for today and we go to the third and last verse of how deep the Father's love for us. Once again, uh, I really do Im invite you to think about these words and to go back and review the words that we covered in the last couple of days. I think it's not too much of a stretch to say most of us are affected when we read these words and think about what they mean. The third verse says, I will not boast of anything, no gifts, no power, no wisdom, but I will boast in Jesus Christ, his death and resurrection. Why should I gain from his reward? I cannot give an answer, but this I know with all my heart. His wounds have paid my ransom. Wonderful thoughts and uh, very important that we keep them in mind all the time. The closing thought for today, Lord, let your spirit fill this place. Let it be like a strong wind blowing across the land. And I hope that the Spirit fills your day today and that you have a blessed day. We look forward to your company again tomorrow morning. Bye for now.